Hey guys, so I got another really quick tutorial for you. Um, it's more of like a helper tip, or I'd say just a really quick way of getting my models from ZBrush into Substance. Uh, I use this when I do concepting or when I need to see how my textures uh, or high poly model is going to bake onto a low poly model. So yeah, let's dive right in. So my character here, obviously, this is a work in progress, um, is Amit, is like a, an Egyptian god. But uh, I'm going to just isolate this one section here just to show you. So this is his torso. What we'll do is we'll show you that this torso actually has uh, subdivision in it. But we're going to need a lot less subdivision when doing this next step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this model. Uh, I'm going to make it a polymesh 3D. So what it will do is it will create a separate I'd say a separate project within my ZBrush. So it's no longer a part of all of this. It's now just a part of this. Uh, so this now has lost all its layers uh, of subdivision, which means it's just a high poly. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna hide this, and then I'm gonna go straight into Z Read Mesher. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure symmetry is on. You can see by the two little red dots on my model. Um, and I'm gonna hit Z Remesher. So what this is gonna do, this is gonna to start to, to like really crunch down on all the polys within my high poly. You can tell right now it's um, it's at about 13 million polys to be exact, uh, but we're gonna have far less and we're gonna need far less polys in order to bring it into substance. Remember, this is also a really quick way to just do this. So, um, there's obviously uh, other ways of retopologizing the model in other programs and whatnot just to get a better better result, but this here is just as good for a quick turnaround. So you can see now my model now is all the way down to 23,000. It was 13 million, now it's down to 23,000. You can see how really low poly that is. So what I like to do next is go into poly deformation actually. I like to hit one on polish by features. So what this does is this will smooth it out just a little bit more. Just gives me a little bit more better surface detail for when I wanna bake onto this pol onto this model. So the next step, right, is because we duplicated the first model, when we first did this, I'm going to go back to the first model. I'm going to toggle visibility on. I'm going to toggle visibility off for the low poly model that we just duplicated. I'm going to select the low poly model that we just uh, remeshed. I'm going to go down to project. I'm going to hit project all. So what this is going to do now is it's going to take the model that's above this, that's visible, and it's going to project the details onto this model. So if I get out of this, you'll see it went back to that existing very uh, rough looking texture, but it doesn't matter because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hit divide. And when I hit divide, you'll see it's has uh, it has actually smoothed out my mesh, right? But we're gonna continue this process where I project it all, and then I hit divide again. So now you'll see that like the model is starting to take and retain all of the, the high poly model details onto my low poly. But we're gonna do this a few more times, project, it's obviously going to take longer the more and more you divide your model because you're, you're adding polygons to your model. So we'll divide it again. Look at the detail. It's looking pretty good, but I want more. So I'm going to have to hit project again. Obviously, it's going to work quicker depending on your computer. My computer's okay. Um, so it's doing this in roughly, what, under 10 seconds per projection. Um, maybe more as we get further in but you can see now that I'm currently at 1.4 million, um, but I'm gonna divide it again, and now we're at 5 million. And if you look at these two models while I toggle between them, it's very hard to notice which one is the high poly. Like, I mean, you can tell that this one is still low poly compared to it because of those extra, extra beveled like uh, creases within all the scales, but from what I can see in my eye, this is very well, like exactly what I need it. So now we've got this model, right? We have these two models here. We don't really need this model anymore, but we're gonna hold on to it anyway. So we'll toggle the visibility on with this. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some really quick UVs within ZBrush to get it into substance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the lowest version of our subdivision. We're gonna go Z plugin, we're gonna go UV master, and we're gonna go work on clone. Now, what this has done is this has taken our low poly model from this project and it's created a separate project just of this model. 
<clears throat> so now this model is on its own, it's low poly, it's 23,000 polys. We're gonna hit Z plugin again, and we're, what we're gonna do, just, just to show you guys, I'm gonna hit unwrap. So what this is gonna do is you can see it's unwrapping this model. 23,000 is still quite a bit, but it was able to do it pretty well. So what we're gonna do now is now that the model has been unwrapped, we're gonna hit check seams. So now you can see that the model was unwrapped on these seams so these seams are the cut lines so this is picture of uv like a square tile uv it was cut on these lines in order to flatten the image out but i'm not happy with this because i want the detail to be in these areas i don't want any interjecting seams so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go release that i'm going to go enable control painting and i'm going to hit protect right so by doing this I'm going to increase the brush size for starters. I'm going to paint into my model where I want it to protect, so where I don't want those seams to be. So everywhere that's red is essentially going to protect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit all these areas here that I don't want to see the seams because it's going to be more visible to the eye. So let me just quickly blast through this. I want it to be... You know, I don't mind the seams being in the mouth because you're not going to see that in the final character. I don't want it to be on the shoulders. I don't want it to be kind of anywhere around these areas here. I actually, hopefully it does it well. ZBrush does really well at this. So hopefully it puts it in the exact place that I think it's going to put it, which is along the back of this model where essentially the tail and the spine is gonna be. So see now we've run into another problem where my protection masking has actually gone through the mesh. So to get rid of this, we're gonna go brush, we're gonna go auto masking, and then we're gonna hit back face mask. But now we've already done the damage, that's okay, because if we go back into here and we hit erase, it's gonna remove everything, but we don't wanna do that. We're gonna go back into here, we wanna make sure the erase tool is on, See, by toggling on and off into that tool, it will just bring it back. If not, just control Z and then go back into it and just do it again. So I'm protecting this section here. Essentially not protecting, I'm doing the opposite because I want the seams to be within here. Let's go back into protect. I want it to kind of protect the front of the hands. So these areas here, I'd like it to protect as far in as I can see there along the whole back side of the model here and a bit more on the belly there. Um, I actually wanted to protect a little bit more on the back as well, just because I'm uh, I'm trying to get the best result possible. Cool. All right, so now that you have your model protected or painted out, masked out, go back into here, and now what we're gonna hit is unwrap again. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna process it based off of this mask and it's gonna unwrap it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of control painting. We're gonna check the seams and would you look at that? So this model now has been re-unwrapped and remeshed or re-UV'd based off of the areas that I'm happy for it to be uh, interjection. So along the back, along the sides, I don't really like it around the fingers there, but just for this demo, I'm gonna show you this and you can do it in your own time. Um, you can get a bit more technical when you wanna do it. So now that we're happy with this mesh, we're gonna go back into Z plugin UV master. We're gonna hit copy UVs. We're gonna go back to the project, not the original project of your main file, your project that we got the high poly and the low poly in. We're gonna go back into this. You're gonna go make sure you're on the highest poly you're gonna go Z plugin and you're gonna go paste UVs. So now this model will have this UV but on our good model. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to low poly and then we're gonna export this out. You're gonna export this out. I've already done that. You wanna export this out essentially as low and then once you're ready, bump this back up to high subdivision, and then you wanna export this out as high. And now we're gonna jump into Substance Painter. So now that you're in Substance Painter, just start it as a base. It doesn't really matter which one you go with here. I have my emit body low, hit okay, and there you go. So the model's already even been smoothed out. 
So now that we have just the torso here, we're able to actually quickly check if you go up to here in 3D and 2D, you can see that the model has been UV'd. So now you have the 3D and the 2D, but we don't need the 2D because we're only doing this for, for, for looks. <laughs> so now we're gonna go into texture settings, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna hit bake mesh maps. In this setting here, you, what you wanna do is pretty much leave everything. First thing you wanna do is hit this little icon here and you wanna find your high poly which is this one here. So what that's gonna do, and you'll see it in the viewport in a couple seconds here, that it's actually gonna bring that high poly model in. It's gonna show you what you're baking your low poly off of. Uh, I like to keep this minimal down, so I can drag this down as far as you can until you see red. See how you can see red within the model here? That means it's not projecting well. So you wanna slightly bring that back up. There you go. So that's kind of the best I'm going to get. I like to bump up max rear distance. Doesn't really matter how far you go. Just don't bring it lower than the max frontal distance. Just bring it up higher. Once again, personal preference, four times, 16 times, 64 times. I'll go 16 times because it's just quicker. Uh, and then what I'll do is I like height. I like bent normals. I don't care about opacity. I go to ambient occlusion. I turn on always, ignore back faces, and then I just hit bake. Depending on once again on your computer, how long this will take, that's uh, that's purely up to your computer, but you can see on the right here how it's baking all those textures out as we um, as we watch it. And now that's done. So now I go return back to bank uh, to the model. Now you have this model in this scene. Now if you look at the left side of the screen and you look at the right side of the screen, you tell me what is actually different. Nothing. We're able to fake these details onto this mesh right here, but that's what it's going to look like. Amazing. So now I'm going to quickly sh uh, put on a, uh, a texture for you to show you. Uh, let's go into a bone stylized. There you go. And look at that. Within minutes, I'd say, you're able to get a concept sculpt in high poly into Substance Painter, bake it in. And you can do this with every single part of the mesh. If you go back into your ZBrush model and you bring everything up, if I want to do the legs next, I go boom. I do the exact same process with the legs and I bring them in. And then in another program, I can bring those UVs together and I can just have them into like separate UV tiles. And uh, and that's it. So yeah, I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed that and uh, thank you.